Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the last game of the day. EDG versus South Korean Telecom T1. Coach Nofe in EDG, very known guy, Coach Koma in SKT, also quite known. Yeah. I think he won some titles here and there, you know. Uh, let's take a look at the draft of these two coaching geniuses. First pick, Zaya. Now, that's something that we've seen a lot, especially from the Chinese teams. They love it. They like the combination of Zaya and Jana together. I love it. Love the combination myself. I think it's uh, very, very powerful, and I think it uh, should be abused by more teams. We saw it uh, last game by C9. We saw it from World Elite. I think when a team gets Zaya and Jana together, that seems to be... The good stuff. The response was a Rakan and a Jarvan. Rakan and Jarvan, like you don't want to, uh, in some cases you don't want to give away Zaya Rakan. But uh, to be honest, uh, that combination is something that uh, we haven't seen in a long time because people have good responses and people want to abuse Arden Sensor. Even though Rakan is also a champion that I can use, Arden Sensor is not uh, as prominent as the other ones because... Rakan has other goals in the team fight than to just uh, shield your AD carry, right? And uh, uh, it's important to view it like that too. Uh, Jarvan, of course, is uh, uh, an S tier pick. Uh, in the jungle, is very powerful. And uh, uh, here with the Rakan, uh, they have a very, very solid engage already. They round off the comp composition with a Twitch last, but we can take a look at EDG side first. They go for the Rek'Sai and the Janna. Uh, Rek'Sai, we saw it once against Nidalee. Nidalee seemed complete garbage against it. Uh, Rek'Sai is also a jungler that I feel has gone uh, under the radar for a lot of uh, Western teams, at least. I think uh, early game he's very strong, and together with uh, some kind of engage, I think he can do very, very well. And uh, early game he's good, and I think he's, he's fairly consistent throughout the game. I don't think he necessarily falls off, and with his new ultimate he can get onto targets very easily. The last time we saw saw it uh, being very successful, I think it's uh, MLXG uh, that played it, and it looked uh, quite strong. Uh, Janna, to make the, the Zaya Janna com com combo, I think it's uh, very powerful. I think uh, the more and more we go into this tournament, the more and more we will see it, the more and more we will see it banned. I think Zaya and Janna is like the new Silver Janna, and uh, it gives you push bottom at all times. Unless they find a bot lane that is even stronger than this in lane phase, then I think this is going to be the, the highest tier of bot lanes. Twitch in the bot lane together with uh, Rakan. Of course, there's a bot lane that scales very, very hard, but uh, they're going to get um, pushed in. They're going to get pushed in on the turret, and uh, later on in the game, they're going to be very impactful. Twitch scales very well, and uh, so does Rakan. So bot lane, they're going to get pushed in for sure. The bands come in and it's Cho uh, Trundle and Renekton. I think uh, uh, th those are fine bands if you're planning to first pick Cho'Gat. Uh, the response from EDG is uh, the blind pick Lucian and the Rumble. Uh, Mouse had had some success on Rumble. I know that he played it uh, quite a bit. Uh, Rumble as a pick, I remember when uh, we were scrimming and uh, Kabusha told me that Cho'Ga has a good time against Rumble. He doesn't necessarily get harassed too much. He can... Uh, sure, in the early levels, he can like contest his push, and uh, it's not the greatest matchup for Rumble. It's not like he counters him, but he can do fine, and eventually he can get outscaled. And uh, the biggest issue for Rumble is that he, he can get easily ganked in this in this uh, in this lane matchup. Of course, the itemization is also very good for Choga, where he can just itemize MR, and all of a sudden Rumble is not going to be as effective as he wants to be. Uh, Rumble does better against champions like Renekton that don't like buying MR, they like buying their Tiamats and like buying their Black Cleavers. And those those are the champions uh, that Rumble shines against. And of course other tanks. I think Chogas is probably like one of the worst uh, uh, tank matchups that Rumble can play in, but uh, Rumble still has some windows in this matchup. And uh, the biggest reason why they pick Rumble here is because uh, sure, they could go for a tank, but they need uh, more magic damage than just a tank. And uh, if they want to blind pick Lucian, they need to go for that. 
Uh, last pick, Oriana. Oriana does fine into Lucian. Uh, it's, a, it's a fine matchup. Uh, uh, some people used to pick uh, Lucian into Oriana, but I think uh, it goes fine uh, either way. I think uh, it's definitely okay. The main thing with Oriana as well is that uh, she does very well into Arden Sensor supports and uh, well into like uh, these AD carries that get peeled for a lot because she can like actually trade with them and uh, she has a lot of burst, you know, and she also has uh, a fair amount of range. So Oriana is uh, definitely a good pick here. Main thing here is that Oriana is not that great against Rumble, but uh, most mid laners uh, are pretty bad against Rumble in general. Oh, they know each other. They know each other. They are, they are buddies. All right, this is quite exciting. EDG had an interesting game. Second game of um, Lucian now for Scout. Faker has had uh, some poor performances against uh, Lucians in the past. We see Storm Raiders on um, on Faker here. It's quite interesting. Heal is quite good because you can heal away from Lucian's ultimate, but he can just counter it with his heal of his own. And um, Storm Raiders, I'm assuming this is to proc it and then try to run away from the cull. I'm assuming that is the thought process uh, behind this Storm Raiders surge. I'm also, I'm, am I calling it right? Storm, Storm Raiders... Storm Raiders, yeah? I'm uh, losing faith in myself the further we go into this, you know? Uh, bottom with uh, with the new new brand of... Uh, uh, what's it called? New brand of summoners, barrier and heal seems to be the, the go-to meta right now. I'm surprised sometimes that there are some cases where I feel like we should see cleanse and we don't. Faker is getting heavily out trade in the mid. Of course, Lucian is very powerful. That level 2 power spike. Thrones heard. I'm a cute pie talking about it. Faker is going to reach level 2. After this one minion. Boom. He didn't miss anything. He's going to lose one CS there. But he still gets the experience. Which at this point in time is the most important part. Already used two potions most likely. He's, um, you know, he used one potion. But uh, he has so low health that another potion would be effective. Now, at this HP, I think Faker could get one shot at in a stun. Clear Love is going for it. Oh, this is going to be very close. Oh! Holy. Very, very close. Might have been the greed of the fact that Faker is refusing to use a potion. But this is one of the strengths of Rek'Sai, that his pathing can be very unpredictable. But at the same time, SKT have managed to place a, pay a ward at their blue buff, at enemy blue buff. So you can... After Huni is placing this ward, you can kind of assume that Rek'Sai is still stuck on bottom side, and he did a full clear. So with this information, you know, uh, Rek'Sai not being a blue buff here, Faker could have made a more educated opinion or educated guess here. Maybe he could have also popped his potion earlier, because if he had full HP here, this gank would have never worked. Keep in mind though, uh, three summoners for two, and uh, first blood for EDG, of course, they get an assist as well, so it's a lot of money. And uh, I would definitely call it worth it. On top of that, you know, you you give and take. You you in theory you get more than just the gold because the enemy team is also losing a lot of CS. You know, uh, Faker in this case had a wave crashing to his turret and he lost a lot of CS. He's double CS behind now, and Faker is under the gun here. What just happened? On my screen, Rakan just teleported. Oh. I don't think SKT can take these trades, not just yet. I don't know which point this, this lane matchup shifts. I think uh, SKT might have to wait for mid lane and uh, jungle to become active. But right now, in the current state of uh, Scout's lane, it, uh, it is not looking too good for SKT's early game here. 1000 gold ahead, uh, only through mid lane. Javan's coming up from behind. EQ. Heal has been used. Nice barrier from iBoy. Three summoners down from EDG. Good gang from Peanut. But it seems like Peanut has been running around a bit too much. You know, he's been, he did his clear and uh, he's uh, one entire level behind now. After he's going to do Gromp, he's going to reach his level, level four. I'm going to pause here because I want to talk about Peanut. He's going to reach level four, but he's slightly behind because he was running around a lot, spent a lot of time. Uh, doing his golems, I assume. I want to take a step back and make sure that we know exactly what Pino was doing. He did 
Blue Grump, Red Buff Golem. Is that the best thing you can do with Javan? Doesn't feel like it. Feels a bit strange to do. Even in this case where uh, Rek'Sai was very low on HP and got his gank off, uh, Jarvan didn't get anything out of it. He was doing golems. Then eventually, I think Jarvan base after that. Meaning Jarvan comes out of base with jungle item. Let's fast forward again to where we were. Jarvan just did the gank bottom. He's going to reach level 4. Clear level is like 1 level head because he took all of his camps pretty much. It's crazy to think that this is the first uh, this is the second Grump he's doing, and then this is the first Wolves he's gonna kill. While Clearlove has cleared his entire jungle, and uh, uh, his uh, Golems and uh, Raptors have spawned again, he's going to do this gank on Faker, and then he's gonna go do Raptors, and then gonna do the topside camps once again. But to be honest, he did the topside camps quite quite late, so he has time to do Golems too if he wants to. Not too sure if this is a possibility. This is uh, still under the turret. If Faker walks out a bit, maybe too far, and Scout can go for him under, if he's not being under the turret, then maybe. But a uh, good enough trade to force Faker back, and uh, this means so much too, right? He's practically dead without giving gold. Let's say Faker just respawned, you know, in theory. I think kill participation percentage is such a strange stat because sometimes players on the worst teams can <laughs> be first place. Let's say they, they keep having games where they just get one kill and then they have, oh my god, look at this guy. He has 100% kill participation. Insane. Doesn't necessarily work like that. Uh, Mouse is in a position where he can actually save TP, so that's quite interesting. Uh, didn't really pay attention to what was happening in top lane. Uh, if Mao saves TP, then we can uh, be on the lookout for a play into bottom because right now EDG have both priority into top side and into bot side, and it looks like Mao is going to save his TP. EDG are permanently pushing in bottom, and Lucian has a big advantage over Faker here. And Scout just needs to push in the lane and walk towards uh, uh, the blue buff, and it's going to be uh, all fine. So, this is looking very reminiscent to the C9 uh, HQ game. Scout is ahead and uh, enemy bot lane is uh, Zaya Janna. It's hard to get pressure and priority on bottom side of the map. Seems like EDG is playing around it very, very well. They are placing pink wards and they're maintaining a, a good sta sta status quo here. The, the, the main thing here is that um, Jarvan, Jarvan, if he uh, wants to create something, then maybe it's to the top side. But right now, the gank is coming in. Uh, SKT have all summoners. Good barbecue, but. Uh, Wolf sees it coming. SKT managed to get away, but this might mean first tower now for EDG. Uh, maybe the TP was uh, too preemptive, uh, a bit too uh, premature, uh, and uh, right now uh, SKT, their equalizer is that uh, they're uh, gaining a lot of CS on top side, and uh, uh, of course, Scout also lost a mid lane wave. He didn't even get to proc his Storm Raiders. That's how behind Faker is. He does a full combo, doesn't proc Storm Raiders. That sucks. EDG didn't manage to get the bottom tower. SKT uh, recognized that uh, EDG, uh, some other players, had to back off and go back into mid lane, go back top, and uh, they managed to defend it for a longer time. It's a good play from uh, SK Telecom to manage uh, to notice this. Uh, the fact that uh, Faker based uh, forces uh, Jarvan to stay in mid a bit and uh, uh, take a few waves. I was thinking if it's possible for EDG to just get the bottom tower here because, uh, of course, SK Telecom showed the fact that uh, Oriana was in base and Jarvan was in mid. But uh, they'd rather just go for the base and uh, get the BF sword and walk down bottom again. And then with the item advantage, they will have an easier time getting it. I'm not too sure if... Uh, uh, if uh, Twitch can even afford BF Sword right here, he buys a Zeal instead and uh, struts down to bot lane. Of course, he's going for the Hurricane build that we've been seeing in the two other Twitch games that were played here at Worlds. So, let's talk options when it comes to SKT. Main thing they could have done is uh, look for a swap and maybe play for the Rift Herald. They do have the TP advantage, so maybe if they can keep this turret for so long so Huni can actually 
TP into bottom and actually create something, then maybe we have a, a window here where SKT can come back to the game. There's no deep wards because, of course, EDG are permanently pushing bottom and uh, EDG and Scout are pressuring through mid. Uh, it might be the case that EDG just gets a turret here and Huni's TP will not even come online before that happens. Very, very similar to the last game that we saw. Wolf first in mid. Roamed here first already because... Uh, they lost bottom tower already, he gave it up early and he just went straight to mid. Main thing here is that SKT have a lot of tools and uh, a lot of good scaling, like they are uh, 3k gold behind, but they do have some good engaged tools for them to kind of uh, get back into it. But right now it's looking really grim for SKT, SKT are getting kind of smashed. And I feel like it's um, primarily because of the picks, they have Rakan and Twitch in bottom that scales very very hard but has a very hard time in lane. And at the same time, Scout's big advantage in mid lane, like he's smashing Faker now. EDG will continue to pressure through topside and then will play for the Rift Herald and uh, eventually they'll want to uh, get the Rift and then uh, break the mid lane so Rihanna is even less safe and uh, they will continue to keep up the pressure. Both TPs are up now as well. Uh, Rumble was... Um, going to have uh, not the greatest time, I think, against uh, this um, this Chogat in lane now, as we go further into it. Chogat didn't completely disrespect him as well, and just went for Righteous of Glory, didn't even buy MR, didn't even need it, he felt. Bang is going for this trade, but he doesn't do a lot of damage, like he autos and like he doesn't have any AD items, he has attack speed, sure, but without uh, the steroid from his ultimate, that, that the AD steroid, then he really doesn't do any damage and you don't want to just drop that ult right off the bat. No flash on Faker. Huni, no flash either. Doesn't have feast, so he doesn't want to flash for, for, for scout. Whoa, 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 what is happening, man? Holy moly, EDG just stomped them. Crazy game from EDG. This is looking really, really good. They can take another one. They have a red buff and they have two ADs. They can just continue. Wow. I want to take a step back and take a look at what just happened. So, Zion Janna got priority top. Roaming into mid, clear up is taking good angle. Right now, SKT see the Rek'Sai, but Jar Jarvan is also coming in at the same angle. Chogat is also around mid. P biggest problem here is that there is no flash on Orianna. And uh, Mouse can just ult him and go after him. The heal comes in a bit too late. Huni comes in, tries to pick up the kill, but no boots and uh, no feast. He could have flash feasted Scout if uh, it was off cooldown, but uh, it wasn't. And uh, Orianna's lack of flash just, uh, just kills him there. Trying to find a way where SKT can kind of come back, and it has to be some insane, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, something stupid, you know, like a five man <laughs> Oriana ultimate, you know. But the game is definitely in EDG's hand. Like, I, I would I would be able to say that, like, right, right now the game is over. The game is legit over. EDG, they should be able to just take everything that they want of the math, map, even now, like, Faker's gonna die again, most likely. Good ultimate. Good ultimate, he has storm raiders, made it proc to save him. I forgot about that. Huni will die anyway though, so that means something. Top lane tower fell. Twitch at least got something during all of this. Here's the play. Twitch continues to push top, he just gives up on the fact that he can uh, affect this battle. Rexa jumps in with his 80 jungle item. Beautiful stop. Does he even have any jungle item? I think he might even have Cinderhulk. It sounds something like Kalila will do. Yeah, Kalila has Cinderhulk, of course. Oof. Is this the tournament where SKT won't win worlds? It's certainly looking like it. I feel like Longzu have been more impressive in their games. Uh, the Immortals game was very competitive and We'll just have to see. I think two games is uh, too close to judge, but this game looks over. Definitely looks over. 
only way for SKT to just get back into this is has to be some insane Wimble going. They have the potential to do it, right? If they just change some CC here and get onto the right targets, then uh, things might go wrong. And EDG, they lost a very late game against um, against HQ, so everything is possible. You know, main thing here with EDG and their composition is that they are very far ahead now, and they can just pressure every lane and push every lane, except maybe the, the Rumble lane against uh, the Cho'Gat. But uh, the Zaya Jan lane should push, and uh, the Lucian lane should have priority uh, as well. The main thing here for EDG is that they want to make sure that they are matching. They want to match by sending Lucian against Orianna at all times, and then bot lane against bot lane. So they have pressure on all matchups. Because if uh, Twitch Rakan is against Lucian, like we see right now, then most likely EDG will lose priority in the Lucian lane. Rift is being taken. Might be the case that uh, SKT will just take the bottom tower now as a response to top tower, but uh, EDG get the extra prize of taking Rift Herald because they're the ones uh, making the play here. And SKT, this is the best thing they can do, right? They can just uh, trade the map and hope that uh, the enemy team will commit into a place to the other side while they are the ones uh, making something happen at the other side of the map. They will be behind on tempo and they will probably get less out of it but uh, these, the, you can't really make efficient trades when you're this far behind. It's very impressive that uh, Faker manages to maintain an even CS here, uh, close to even, even though he was completely like demolished in the early game. SKT could kind of foresee the fact that EG would play into topside because of the Rift Herald, and the moment they did, they just had the way of pushing into bottom, committed, were behind on tempo, but they were fine with the trade. If you don't commit to that kind of a trade, uh, you will just lose everything without a trade. Like if they're trying to contest topside, they would lose. So making these type of trades is the only thing they can do. I think Hourglass is a good choice of items. There's a lot of physical damage here on EDG. Sure, they have the Rumble, but he doesn't have Sorcerer Shoes. He has Mercury Threads. I think that's the wrong purchase because he's the only magic damage dealer, and I don't think he needs Mercs uh, in this game. I think he should get Sorcerer Shoes and then an Hourglass, and then he can avoid most of the CC that will target him and go his direction. Sork Shoes are just so OP in this, in this game. There's the Rumble Paradise. Smite from Peanut. Who got it? it was I Boy? All good. All good in the hood. SKT are still managing to hold a very, very good defense line. They are not uh, giving up too much and uh, they're playing the defensive game very, very well. Uh, it doesn't really feel like SKT is 5,000 gold ahead. I mean, behind. They, um, well, it definitely doesn't feel like they're 5k gold ahead. That's for sure. But they are maintaining pink wards in their own jungle and not uh, allowing the enemy team to just take over everything. And uh, this is what they have to do right now. They have to wait and stall it out, wait for some items to hit, maybe an Infinity Edge on Twitch, and maybe then they can do something. And maybe even then they need to stall for even longer. But picks like this is always great. Pink World was placed. Scout doesn't have Flash, but the uh, E cooldown comes out quick. Peanut flashes. He has EQ ready. Barbecue. Barbecue lands. Ooh. Is this a Nasher? This looks like a Nasher for EDG. EDG can definitely do Nasher off of this, unless uh, Huni does some Miracle Steal with his Feast. Let's take a look now. Let's take a step back. So the play from SKT was to try to get a pick here on Scout. He survives because of the lack of damage from SK Telecom. Let's see what information they're working with. They see Janna and... Zana, Janna and Zaya in mid lane. Lucian is 
completely alone here. They don't have a lot of damage though, like Peanut and uh, Wolf together don't have enough damage to one shot the scout. And then they were in a situation where they overcommitted. Maybe a Faker was in a better position to assist this, maybe they could have one shot a scout. In a case where they don't, this is going to be horrible for them, as we can see. This Nasha should be relatively free. Only point of worry is the uh, Choga Feast. Seems like Huni's not gonna not gonna even try. Alright, crazy. I think it was a part of the bait that Oriana was just chilling up top, but uh, Mako was here very, very fast. Like the moment something happened, he started moving from mid into top side and it went uh, very, very fast. EDG seems just they're going to take away a game again from against SKT. You know, SKT always gets hyped, but they always, always drop games and, and not always, but more recently, they've dropped a lot of games in group stages. I'm in no fear that SKT will get through or not get through, but you know it's not uh, looking so bright here for SK Telecom. Scout is a pretty insane illusion, even though he kind of threw the game yesterday by getting caught. He's uh, like the Lucian players from, from China are definitely on another level. And the Rumble pick that we haven't seen uh, this time around at Worlds has been uh, very effective and very prominent. Is, it, uh, is he just going to end the game here? Pang is uh, throwing out a lot of damage, doesn't seem like they can end. They don't have any melee creeps, so he's just going to back over the inhib yeah. Blue buff is going to spawn as well. Like the main thing here for EDG is like the way they played out the early game, them having the Zaya and the Janna, which is completely OP. I think the more and more I see it, the more OP I feel it is. And then uh, Clearlove being very successful with his, with his gank, uh, Faker not respecting it, not using a potion, and uh, everything being just very very close. And then Scout over and over forcing Faker to base, and with that uh, priority getting the first tower in the bot lane. If you have priority on two lanes, most likely you're going to win the game. That is just how uh, the game functions in general. If you have priority on two lanes, you are in a winning position. And uh, right now, as it seems, EDG have uh, priority everywhere. Rumble is just uh, uh, matching uh, the top lane and it doesn't matter too much. And At this point, ooh, all right. Ice cold, eye boy. The more, the more I see from eye boy, the more I like this guy. Very impressive player. Super creeps in mid lane are storming now the base. Chogas is backing off. He has the TP to join in the fight if something goes wrong. Faker is half on mana. Pina with the blue buff. Let's see now how it goes down. I feel really, really sick. I have like a, my nose is stuffed and my throat is burning. It's uh, really not a good situation for me here. <clears throat> Close, but no cigar. EDG will have to wait for the next Nasher to end this game. Uh, they'll just have to keep pressure, keep pushing the lanes, keep stealing away the jungle, make sure that they farm more efficiently than SK Telecom by taking away their jungle, making sure they don't have vision for the upcoming objectives, and uh, it should be all good. There should be smooth sailing here for EDG. SKT have a very good scaling comp, right? But it's just when your 10k go behind, like, do you really think you're going to come back, you know, it's, uh, it's just uh, not enough. 
not enough to have a better scaling comp. You would have to hope that the enemy team like group up and clump up together and you get like, some insane five-man ult or you just have to hope that the enemy team don't know what they're doing. But uh, most of the Chinese teams are playing uh, very, very fast when they're ahead. They're playing uh, very, very fast and they're playing uh, with no remorse. I'm not too sure if I'm a fan of what EDG is doing here because they're just standing and waiting for the Super Creeps in mid to do work. But I don't think that's good enough. I think they should just spread their pressure to more lanes than just uh, just the one. They're not really getting that many hits onto the turret. Here's EDG and uh, Scout taking a Q to his face. They are winning the poke war, but I'm not too convinced with having Lucian and Zaya trying to hit the turret. It's... Um, Seems like it's taking a lot of time. The turret is half HP now, the wave is coming in, Oriana is nowhere to be seen, EG can just commit for this. Seems like it works out in the end. Fake didn't have enough mana to stay, had to base, and then when they spotted him in mid lane clearing super creeps, they just went for it. I just thought we would be in the same situation where Huni would just uh, clear away the super creeps in mid. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy moly. What the hell? <laughs> Holy moly. Hey, my, <laughs> never insult SKT. <laughs> never talk bad about SKT. Just don't do it. Just don't do it, man. Holy moly. What the hell? Holy moly. What the hell? Wolf. Wolf. Holy shit. That is crazy, man. Oh my goodness. I love that they just saw that, man. That they just see this. I think that's the biggest difference between uh, like Korean teams and SKT in particular when they are behind they are they have their eyes open you know they have they are very sharp when it comes to this like I want to take a look from the other angle when we saw them all so here they are grouped up together they spot Rakan here still Rakan is walking towards here and from this angle they're standing on a pink ward Bang is chilling they're using so many angles here, and the timing of everyone is so good. Like, Huni is just running in, and holy communication, man. Wolf lands a very, very good ultimate. Like, everyone is hugging this side, right? Because they know that um, that uh, Wolf, like, uh, they know that Rakan and Javan are chilling over here, and this is just absolutely beautiful. This is amazing. Wow, I am so impressed. Whenever you count out SKT, they just... Ace the enemy team, or didn't ace, but they kill four people and get Baron. <laughs> the timing couldn't have been better either, like, it's just when Nash spawns, and... Wow. You know, now now it matters so much that SKT is, is scaling better. <laughs> now it matters so much that SKT is scaling better than enemy team, because... You know, I would talk about how, how over it is for, for, for SKT, because of this 10k gold disparity, but SKT have... A really hard scaling composition now and you could argue that they are pretty even now 4k behind they have the baron buff which was also worth a lot of gold twitch has three items oriana has three items as well and and chogat is having the time of his life holy moly that is crazy man Oof. is skt just gonna win this game i'm so sad for edg because this is the second game second game where they're just super far ahead and they just get booped by a twitch they just get smashed by a twitch at one point after playing like close to flawlessly throughout the game and uh, now we're in this situation so SKT just pick up 4 kills the first 4 kills of the game and now they're pushing with Baron you know, this, the only thing SKT need to do now is uh, I don't know who is just gonna die here man what the hell Huni was a bit too impatient Huni was way too impatient. So SKT are pushing in mid. So SKT is pushing in mid, no one is showing up on mid. 
Everyone's rotating here, but they don't have vision in the bot side of the jungle, so Huni should just take a step back and make sure that he can group with his teammates here. No one is showing up mid, so maybe the play should have been that Huni backs off and SKT just push up all the way. Because if they push up all the way, they can walk with the minions, be very safe, and then the moment someone shows up here, they can, they can then rotate into bottom. But right here with this wave, since no one is showing in mid, they could have also just committed into the mid tower. But right now no one was showing up and Huni took a risk that wasn't necessary. Uh, SKT pushed the wave, got priority, but no one showed up on the wave, so it didn't really matter. So I felt like here SKT could have just pushed with this wave all the way, uh, Huni didn't need to take this risk and uh, uh, they could have just forced someone to show up and then rotate into bottom. Then rotate into bottom. That's, uh, that's the main thing here. What's up with uh, the grey hair on Peanut? Is he just old? Uh, Alright, he's just uh, rocking the George Clooney. Eskitel can lose the guy, but they get a turret, so it's uh, not that terrible. Next dragon is Elder, but... Uh, EDZ are the ones with the three drakes, so it doesn't matter too much about for Eskitelcom. Bam buff is up for another minute and a half. I think uh, the goal for uh, SKT is, here, is to just get the, the top tower here up top. I don't know if they can just break the base with this inhib. Might be uh, a lot to ask for. Only has the TP so he can just push top, but he's the only one without uh, the Baron. So it's uh, not as effective as they would want it to be. Yeah, potentially, like, EDG have a lot of ultimates they can wave clear with. If it uh, if push comes to shove, they can also just um, auto-attack the melee creeps and be fine. Uh, SKT don't have that long of a range when it comes to hitting turrets, because Twitch needs to pop his ultimate for that, and you don't want to use ultimate to hit the tower, because you're pretty much uh, so much weaker when it's on cooldown. There we go, EDG. There's an hourglass on Faker, we need to keep in mind this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Massive, massive play from uh, from iBoy. iBoy just catches both uh, Bang and Peanut here, and he was a massacre. Very impressive how Clear Love uh, manages to find this angle here. He's working together with uh, his team. And... Uh, I feel like this is a bit too greedy, you know, no one no one is showing up top, uh, Huni is just hitting the tower for free, and SKT don't need re really need to walk up so far. They are in a blind spot right here after they place the pink, and Clear Love is just eeing over the wall here, and uh, uh, it turns out to be a bad situation. Very, very good ultimate from iBoy that roots up Bang, and uh, they just kill him here with scout damage and iBoy's damage. Uh, it matters a lot. So I think SKT made a mistake by uh, just walking up too far and uh, playing towards the side where Rexai could, uh, could engage on them on and then iBoy got a nice ultimate onto Bang that uh, just uh, just killed him. Like sure, Bang could have flashed, but him flashing away would still be a bad situation. Can EDG just finish the game now? They kind of deserve this. They deserve to win this game, you know. <laughs> they deserve this W. They just got, like, SKT, they got their combo, they got the ready top play, you know, and uh, uh, just let 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 EDG get the win here. Everyone's spawning. I was looking at Huni's uh, death timer, and uh, that was the only one long enough. The other guys are up. And it seems like this is going to just come down to the next national. Yeah, SKT are just being way too dis Disrespectful. They should play towards um, the other side, the bottom side of this uh, this, this party here, and uh, Maker is doing a very good job of maintaining Arden Sensor on two people, and uh, you know, uh, plain and simple, Faker just got engaged on where he uh, where he didn't need to, and then uh, Huni was just pushing top tower for free, and they just should have just not taken any risk down bottom and just let Huni take the turret for free. Uh, very disappointing here from SK Telecom. Uh, good engage from uh, Quillov, managing to find it, even though they don't have the strongest engage in the game. Uh, they managed to find some uh, very good opportunities. 
with the Rumble Ultimate and the, the Rek'Sai Tunnel. Oh no, this is classic Scout, man. Oh my goodness. Alright, Wolves just got... Whoa, 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 whoa. Wolves just got massacred, man. Whoa, Twitch. Holy. Holy moly. So Wolf just got one-shotted, didn't really ult and W anyone. Like he ulted and then he got one-shotted. Jana ult is still up. I feel like she could have used that. Cho got silence, hit a lot of key people. And then like um, Oriana ulted two people as well. He ulted Zaya and Lucian. Didn't matter too much because there wasn't much of a follow-up. But we can see it again right here. Uh, Elder Dragon for, for Varuski Telecom. Ult hits two people, right? And then clear up is in the mix without uh, any team. And then the engage gets denied by Iboy here very, very well. And then Wolf, gets one, Wolf just gets one-shotted. Klilov is a bit too deep here and uh, he's really tanking for nothing because his team is um, his team is just being forced here into this funnel here where, where Bank can just shoot all of them. And uh, the play for uh, EDG here was to just kill, uh, like disengage and kill Wolf and focus Peanut. But right here, like Klilov was just too deep and baited his team into this kind of funnel where Bank just got to ult everyone. So the, the start wasn't too terrible, right? The Oriana ultimate. Uh, Scout getting caught, of course, is not a good start to a fight. But the Rumble ultimate does a good barbecue here. And then, right now, from this position, where Clear Love, he tunnels in, right? He tunnels in right here. If he just tries to walk out right now, instead of chasing after Faker, then it's going to be a better situation. Right now, he just walks forward, walks forward, and it's not necessary at all. He needs to back up. And his team got baited by him, and they just got uh, pushed into this funnel. And right now, Baron is also live. We see that uh, together together with the Elder Dragon and the Baron, SKT should be in uh, the winning position now. Bang now has four items, which is uh, absolutely crazy. Wolf shouldn't engage him, or he should just give <laughs> Arden sense of proc to Twitch, and then he's done his job. Pretty much. <sighs> Crazy man, I feel so bad for EDG. It's it's really really sad because every game like EDG has looked like this. They played only two games, but this is it's very similar to the first game that they played. Like the first game was a bit more competitive, uh, like it was a bit more back and forth, and it was. Probably longer than this one was, but SKT with 10k gold behind, and then they got this like miracle engage that Wolf did. It was uh, absolutely crazy this engage that they just uh, got in there and they managed to wombo combo four people. It was uh, pretty juicy, pretty crazy. Holy moly! I wish this game was like earlier in the day so I would have like more energy for it. And just shooting away when he is spreading the barrel in the bottom side difficult now for EDG to get an engage onto SKT like the engage they got into bot lane was also quite like miraculous because EDG don't have the best engage in the game they have like Rumbles and Rek'Sai and that's not like really convincing and we can see Klelov's engage here that's not the greatest Q doesn't land from Chogat so he manages to get away Torres is very very low it's uh, dropping now I think for sure Bottom wave is also pretty big. Maybe they should find a way for Huni to buff it up while SKT is doing work elsewhere. You know, the biggest difference between like Iboy and for example Doublelift, like look how forward Iboy is playing. Like he knows the limits of his champion. He's trying to auto and he's trying to poke and he's trying to do so much. While double lift is being kind of a sissy, and that could be said for a lot of Western AD carries, they aren't really walking forward and pushing the limits of their champion. They are scared at the stage, and of course, uh, if they overstep by like one uh, one pixel, then of course they might die. 
but uh, if you want to push uh, the limit of your hero then this is, these are things you have to do very tough predicament now for EDG they just have to hope for some pickoffs like they have to hope that uh, they manage to like the moment Twitch opens that they manage to like uh, get crits and Lucian and Zaya can just like aura him and really pull him down quick before he kills everyone but that's also a very hard thing to do because he gets priority he gets to hit first and he also has longer range so as long as he's not um, standing in the middle of the enemy team it's hard to kill Twitcher as well because the engage of SK Telecom is also very strong like Rakan can CC things for him and uh, they can easily collapse at the same time together with Twitch which is a big difference between SKT's comp and Fnatic's comp like Two similar picks that SKT have to Fnatic is Chogat and Twitch, but the main thing that uh, <laughs> Fnatic didn't have is Jarvan for the engage, or Rakan for the engage. So this is why uh, Fnatic's comp uh, just fell through. They were just getting kited, and the only win condition they had was Twitch. But the but SKT here have a lot of win conditions in their battles. They have the Oriana ball. They have uh, a lot of good engage tools, and um, it gives them more opportunities to excel as a team. Oh, Faker. Faker, Faker, Playmaker, what are you doing, man? Just play with Bang. You got carried this game, son. You got carried this game really, really hard. By your bot lane. Ooh, eye boy. Nicely timed shield. And that's the game for SK Telecom. EDG. Man, EDG. It's crazy, like EDG have shown some very good qualities, but they just don't seem to know how to finish those games. Something goes wrong and they just get engaged on and all of a sudden the game is turned on its head. That was always the problem with Rumble and Lucian comps is that uh, they don't, while you have AD champ and you have AP champ, the problem is that uh, usually Rumble wants to work together with things that have CC, like R Rumble, Oriana, it seems more juicy because it has some CC and it has synergy in fights. The only synergy they have is that one is physical and one is magic damage and um, the later you're gone in the game the less of a win condition you have and uh, of course like Lucian Rumble are strong landers and they can get priority and push in the early game and EGG got that and that was enough for them to win the game on paper but then SKT got this beautiful engage that uh, uh, made them get the 4-man Oriano, the 4-man everything to be honest and uh, SKT turned the game on its head. Later down the line, EG got some good engages down in bottom because SKT kind of overstepped. Huni got caught with the Baron, and then uh, Faker got caught as well. And um, this was uh, kind of an issue uh, for SK Telecom that they did manage to do some mistakes, and EG still paid attention closely to what they could and could not do. I think EG uh, definitely, together with World Elite, figured something out here with the Janna and the Zaya. This lane is completely broken. I don't think you should give it up to anyone. Sure, you could argue that Twitch and Rakan carried this game, but that was, uh, you know, imagine a situation where SKT was a team with a 5k gold lead or 10k gold lead, and maybe this game would have looked very differently. You know, they were very sharp at uh, giving away uh, as little as possible when EDG was ahead. They were trying to uh, create picks that didn't end in something good, right? They were, they got, they tried to catch Scout up top and. Uh, it was still, you know, a big difference from a lot of other teams that we see when they are behind. It just kind of fall over. And uh, in general, it was a fun game. It was a fun day. Uh, a lot of short games, a lot of uh, long games as well. So it kind of balances out. But that um, that's it for me today. Uh, I think um, tomorrow, hopefully, is going to be better. Uh, I'll see you guys then. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.